My name is Daniel. We've been here at South Bay Brewing for about six years. We opened in 2010. I've personally been brewing for about eight years, and that's about it. I mean, now we got a shop and we're selling homebrew supplies. Kind of the home brewing, more of a dare, just do it. So it went from a little two gallon kit into a shop. <laughs> so it was uh, the craft of actually making the beer, producing it from scratch, really, you know, you get your hands on, you can take care of everything yourself, make a beer that you can't get in the stores. And it's just, you know, it's something to talk about. Good for parties, and it's just a really fun thing to do. Today we're probably gonna do a porter, a little darker, um, but it'll still be clean, not too bitter. So a little more traditional English style. We're gonna use two row, we're gonna use some dark malt, some roasted barley, a little chocolate malt, and then we'll use some English yeast to uh, give it that real estery characteristics and maltiness. So since we're making a porter today, we're going to weigh out some grains. We're gonna start with a little pale chocolate, just to give it a little hint of color and some flavor, some chocolate note background. We'll probably use about four ounces in this recipe. We're also gonna use some crystal Munich, which is like 60L for the color. And we'll do four ounces of this as well. We're also gonna mix in some black patent to give that dark color. And they all could be mixed together. There's no real need to keep them separate. We're gonna mash them all together, which we'll show you in a minute. Then we'll go ahead and get some two row malt, which will be our base malt. It is a base grain, which is actually made in Canada. It's just a really basic grain. There's no color. It's not been crystallized or roasted. And we'll be using nine pounds of two row to get our sugars that we'll need to ferment to make our alcohol. All right, we're gonna mill those grains. So we have all those whole grains. Now we gotta crush them open. So we basically crack the outside open so we can get, extract those sugars that are in that grain that we really are looking for. Right now we're heating up our strike water. We are gonna put this into our mash tun, which will be a vessel for our grain so we can convert the sugars out of the grain. We're gonna hit our water up to about 165. So when the gr it hits our grains, hit that hot water, It'll help cool down because the grains are going to be colder than our water. And we want to get our temperatures to about 152 while we mash in. So our water now is in the mash tun and we will be adding our grains on top of that water. So we're using this particular mash tun because it's really a simple design. There's a screen on the bottom that will help filter out the grains. Uh, simple spigot, nothing really elaborate. There's no stainless steel on this one. No valve, just a nice little tap on there. So you don't really have to go big to make homebrew. So right now we will mash in, it will uh, stir our grains, make sure it does not clump and keep it a little loose. We'll check the temperatures and we'll make sure it gets down to 152 and we'll put the lid on top of our cooler and let it sit for 45 minutes to an hour. So once our temperature is set at 152, we are going to put the lid on and our next step will just be to sparge and collect our wart. So we're done with our hour mash and we're going to remove our lid and recirculate. Pretty much that will be collecting our wart from our mash tun and putting it back on top of the grain bed, trying not to disturb the grain bed too much. This will also help clarify the beer, pull any particulates that might be in our screen, and the grain bed itself will act like a natural filter. And then you normally do this about two or three times until your beer runs out clear and there's nothing, particles falling out. Since we've done this three times already, we're going to start collecting at a slow rate. 
We have heated up water to 170 degrees already and have put it in our hot liquor tank, which is above our mash tun. We'll be trying to add the water, the sparge water, at the same rate that we are collecting our wort. This whole process should take you about 45 minutes to an hour to collect all your wort. So after we collect all of our wort, we will start our boil and add our hops and boil for an hour. So our wort is up to a boil now. It's a rolling boil, which we'll probably turn down. It's a little vigorous. But we're gonna add our hops at this time and start a timer for one hour. We're gonna be using Willamette today, probably about one ounce of whole hops. So we've added our hops and everything's mixed in and we are going to start a timer for one hour. All right, so we've been boiling for about 45 minutes now. We're gonna add a wort chiller into our wort. It'll help sanitize it and we will use this to pull down our beer. Basically, we'll be using garden hose water, just tap water, and I'll be forcing through the coils, and it's kind of like a radiator. It'll take the heat out of the wart, and it'll come out with hot water. These uh, wart chillers here we have in our store, and you can come by and pick one up. You can make one yourself if you really wanted to uh, roll the copper, or you can buy them online. Right now, we're going to transfer our beer into our carboy, which has been sanitized with star sand. It's a little foamy, but don't fear the foam. Star sand has a tendency to foam up on you. It's just the nature of the star sand. Beer. Looks like we didn't get a full five gallons, but that's all right. It'll still make beer and it'll still be good. Right now we'll Take the funnel off and we'll add our yeast. We are adding 011 by White Labs, European Ale yeast. All right. Put our airlock and brung on. Give it a shake to help aerate it. And we'll let this go for two weeks. Um, this one I didn't really bother the filter. I left a lot of the hops inside the brew pot. Uh, what got in there will just sit there until I put it into a secondary and all of it will be left behind in the primary fermentation. Um, next phase is to let this sit for two weeks and then we'll let it condition in the carboy and then we'll bottle it. So after it's done fermenting, you can either keg your beer or bottle it and then drink it. actually pretty good. Uh, if you're brewing and you put bleach instead of water by accident, yeah, you'll die. But um, <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you're responsible and, and you, you rinse your sanitizer and you do a clean, thorough job of cleaning your stuff and you, you make a, to the best of your effort, clean homebrew, yeah, 